I made a real life Pokemon Go gym challenge. Or I asked my friend to. I was on my way to a wedding in Des Moines, Iowa, and had to pass through Iowa City, where I lived when PvP first came out. This was my hometown for all things Pokemon Go, and where I first learned to play PvP. I figured this would be a great opportunity to check in with my old friends from the area, and so I asked Taco Dog 8 if he would put together a gym leader themed team to represent Iowa City. My team would be a standard open Great League team, but I would have no knowledge of Taco Dog's theme, so I would have to prepare for anything. My trip would last from Friday morning to Monday afternoon, so that would give us each three days to prepare our teams. And this was right after the new GBL update just went live. After a very important stop, it was time to get on the road, and I needed to see what people were running in the new meta. I decided to run Swampert and Metacham to put some pressure on the ground types that just got buffed. However, this is day one, so we're not facing a lot of meta yet. We started the day with a trip to a local coffee shop, then ended up having some pretty cool stuff. The coffee was okay, but the espresso was definitely hidden behind a wall of sugar, and I actually like to taste my coffee. Up next, we had a pool party to go to, so some Swampert games felt fitting. We also got to see the new Steelix with Breaking Swipe, however, this one was actually running Crunch and Earthquake. I don't think they got the memo. After leaving the Steelix matchup with all this energy, Metacham comes back in, we get the last shield, but it doesn't really matter because we'll just be able to farm this down for the win anyway. <laughs> it reminds me of that fish in Spongebob that's just dragging itself. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta play with your balls, right? Yeah. <laughs> but now it's time for the wedding. The wedding was held at a botanical garden, which was beautiful if a little toasty. Something about that venue had me thinking about grass types, so I decided to build a superior, as I actually hadn't had one of these before, but with the newly buffed Aerial Ace, superior becomes one of the premier grass types, being incredibly tanky, while also being able to beat other grasses using Aerial Ace and even pressure Metacham. So the first stop today was a game store, obviously. This store had everything. Card games, board games, video games, and a whole music section with vinyl and even a Lego room. And of course, they had multi-award winning game of the year, Super Mario Bros. 2. And, and 3. They also had 3. Unfortunately, we did not get any good pulls on the packs we bought. But it was time to move on to our next adventure. The next training area was an arcade bar called Up Down, where all the fighting games reminded me that Metacham is still top tier despite the sidekick nerf. Put him in, coach. And did you know there's a four player Pac Man versus game? This thing was awesome.
It was time to travel back to Iowa City and take on the gym leader, Taco Dog 8. And even though Swampert had been doing really well in GBL so far, I decided to go for Pelipper as both my water and a flying type. G Fisk was okay, but Steelix with a new breaking swipe seemed too good to pass up at the moment. We already have a Metacham and Superior, so I added Umbreon for extra tankiness and Frostlass, since she has the potential to run over restricted metas, which my opponent would be playing in. The gym challenge would be held outside the Englert Theater, a beautiful old building that hosts nationally touring acts as well as local performers. But enough of me talking, it's time to get into the battles. Taco Dog chose ground type for his team, so now I'm regretting putting Swampert on the bench. Pelipper still looks good though, and with Superior to pressure the Mud Boys, I have my game plan. Locking in Pelipper, Umbreon, and Superior, we are ready to go. We get Pelipper lead into Sand Slash, which is great for us, although Pelipper has pretty solid leads all around, just looking out for this Quagsire because of the Stone Edge. This is why we bring Superior. The first move we can tank no matter what, even if it's Sludge Bomb, but there it is, Stone Edge, and I go here to throw the Frenzy Plant. Aerial Ace probably would have been fine, cheaper energy, still does decent damage, so I go for that second, and we get the KO. We're also up a shield here. Celix comes in, and we're fine to stay in with Superior, getting off an extra Frenzy Plant, as even though Superior is mostly a bulk Pokemon, Frenzy Plant still chunks. Barely not making it there to that Aerial Ace. I believe we were one turn half a second off, but Breaking Swipe comes through, so we're able to get some energy off of Steelix. Pelipper, we did get to farm up quite a lot, but so did the Sand Slash. The Sand Slash comes in, throwing what I assume is a Night Slash, and there it is, and he gets the boost. Safe swapping to Umbreon. Pelipper still having all that energy. We have all the shields left for Umbreon, and Scorching Sands? That kind of hurts, so we're going to start have to think about using these shields now. Starting to get that last shield with the foul play, we double up, throw our second one here. Does a chunk of damage, but this next Scorching Sands will hurt if it lands. He goes for the bait with a Night Slash, but we're saving our shields for the Pelipper, using Umbreon to soak up all the energy. Pelipper having double Weather Ball, immediately tapping on it there. First KO, and second Weather Ball here. This will KO the Steelix as well. Game 2, we have a similar idea, but in this time, I think we're going to switch out Umbreon for Metacham, leading Metacham because it's just kind of safe. We get Flygon. Now our Ice Punch is going to focus a lot more damage onto this Flygon than the Scorching Sands will in return. So we're going to let this first one go. Getting CMP there, farming up just a little bit more. Throwing the Ice Punch, getting our first shield, and now we want to make it to this next shield, but he goes for a switch into Steelix. So we're going to double up for switching to Pelipper. Breaking Swipe isn't really there to do damage, it's there to help lower some of that attack stat, but being Dragon type, it is a good neutral move. This next one comes through, we're still going to let this through. We haven't seen Crunch yet, we've only seen Breaking Swipe, so we're not sure if it has Earthquake or Crunch. Either way, we're letting it through because we still have that fully um, stocked Metacham as well as a Superior in the back. Flygon gets the Dragon Claw, we get to come in with one Ice Punch, we're I believe one, maybe two counters away from the next one, but he lets it go, comes in with Gligar. Now, this is a little bit scary because our Pokemon in the back is superior, but switching immediately and with a two shield advantage, we're going to see if we can win this just through the Frenzy Plant damage. Flygar having that Flying type does make this neutral, but it still does a chunk of damage. Frenzy Plant's kind of broken. Shields come out, and we just need to get to this Aerial Ace here to try and close out the game. But the Aerial Ace does a little less damage than I thought it would, so we're going to have to Vine Whip down for the win. And as the Aerial Ace from Gligar goes through, so does our Vine Whip, and that is GG's. We won 2-0, and have now the title badge of Iowa City that I just came up with. Then it's mine now. It's mine. And with that, we have won our first gym challenge. So shout out to Taco Dog 8. You can find him over on Into the Dragonair's Den. It's a podcast that I believe is on all streaming platforms as of now. And thanks for representing my PvP hometown, Iowa City. With all of the big play Pokemon circuit tournaments coming up, 
I will be traveling more, so let me know what other cities and what top trainers I might have to challenge along my way to complete this gym challenge, because you, you gotta get 8 badges. We only have one. We have, we have to find 7 more somewhere. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, because it's free. It's almost as free as running Lickitung in Open Great League.